attachment is at the root cause of all of this. You've been treating the symptoms. You haven't treated the problem at its heart. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about something in the field of psychology that even most therapists don't know about. This is something secret. It shouldn't be a secret, but it is because nobody knows about it. And I'm going to teach you today because it's a big, big piece of your relationships that you need to know about right away so you can start managing it. What I'm talking about is attachment. Now, attachment is the way that we connect to other people to give and receive love. It's a connection, an attachment. We attach to people. But how does that work? How does that work? This is the big question. When I went through graduate school to get my master's degree, and then become a licensed psychotherapist before I became a coach now for people with attachment issues. When I went through grad school, what they told us about attachment was this. You know, you don't have to worry about that attachment. It's not a big deal. It's mostly for little kids. If it happens for adults, it will always become a personality disorder. So don't worry about attachment. Why would they do this? Why is this how attachment works in, in graduate school? In a lot of them, I should say, because I've talked to other therapists and that is how other therapists are taught about it also in school. They say, why wasn't I taught? It's because here in the West, we tend to teach to diagnoses in the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual. We teach to diagnoses. We teach to disorders. We don't teach so much to systems. And herein lies the problem. Attachment is the way your entire system functions. And when attachment is out of whack, turns out you can end up with all these other diagnoses that only really make sense when you track them back to attachment. People ask all the time, where does depression come from? Where does anxiety come from, right? People wonder this all the time and say, how is it that a human species evolved that requires special neurological medication to get in balance, but other animals don't have that problem? Have you stopped and thought that maybe we need to look at the whole system? See, that's when I got my master's degree, it was an emphasis in marriage and family therapy, which is systemic. We look at the wider system. And then I went through school and got all my training under different clinicians with different licenses. So I learned what everybody else is looking at. Now that I coach, I look at systems, the whole system. And that's where attachment comes in. See, your attachment begins the moment you are born. Your brain says, will other people act with me cooperatively in love and and care and good faith. Will they they hold me when I cry? When they will they take care of my needs fairly quickly? Will I get warmth and contact with my mother and father? Will I get something called oxytocin bonding in the absence of stress, warmth and care and nurturing? Am I gonna get these things or am I not gonna get these things? Some of you watching this right now, let me know. Are you stuck in a situation where your brain is not used to warmth and affection and care? In fact, does it maybe sound a little bit weird or even feel weird when you try to do it? Drop me a comment. I'm gonna pin this this question in the comments below. Drop me a comment and let me know if affection feels a little bit uncomfortable for you. If oxytocin bonding feels weird, it may be that you didn't get much as a kid. Maybe you were in the NICU for a few weeks. And yes, your parents loved you. And yes, you got nurturing, but probably not as much warmth and care as a baby needs in those first few weeks. You're in a, a sterile environment kept safe, but probably crying, learning people won't respond to you like they normally would if you were outside of that. Maybe you got put in daycare way early on. Maybe you got abused. Maybe you got neglected. Maybe your parents just didn't know what to do. Maybe they were just frenzied and rushed around all the time and stressed, so they left you to cry things out in your crib more than they should have. Maybe they didn't know the good things to give you this warmth and bonding. Maybe your parents just didn't know any better. Maybe they were depressed themselves. Who knows? Whatever the case, there are so many factors that feed into your belief that people will care about you in good faith or they won't. They might not. Maybe your brain says, I am not going to be cared for, nurtured and acted with and cooperated with. There's something, maybe there's something wrong with me on the inside that everybody else can see, but I don't know what it is. And that makes people not want to connect with me and not bond with me. They know that I don't deserve to be loved. So I need to act perfectly and perform in all my relationships and get everything right so that people won't abandon me. That would be anxious attachment style. There's also avoidant attachment style. I am so used to being acted upon, people acting upon me and pushing my buttons and making making me do things that I resist and I want to get away from people. I want to push back on people because it's dangerous to let them get too close. Other people are the problem, not me, other people. So I'm going to stay out of these relationships. And when things get too intense emotionally, I'm going to back out of relationships. I'm going to run away. Maybe I'll push other people's buttons to make them feel good or bad to try to push them back and keep them where they're supposed to be. But I, I'm not in this to get deeply, intimately connected because I can't. That's not possible in my life. That would be avoidance style. Disorganized style is a blend of the two. I am so 
so used to being acted upon and I'm fearful and I try to be perfect, but I can't. So now when I get scared, I become aggressive and I push other people's buttons and I'm chaotic. I'm all over the place. I am just as confused as you are. That would be a disorganized attachment style, also called anxious avoidant nowadays. We've changed that from the original. Those three different attachment styles are different ways that you as a child were treated and reacted to the world around you. And when you are used to being acted upon, you get acted upon all the time because you're just so used to it. That's all you can think about, right? That's all you know how to do. So you either try to soften the blow when people act upon you, you try to stay away so they can't act upon you, or you act upon them. This is the heart and soul of attachment. This is why people with attachment issues go out and act upon their world or expect to be acted upon. And this is why healthy people see those red flags and stay away. So then you create a self-sustaining system where you are only around unhealthy people with broken attachment who will continue to treat you like an object and hurt you and manage you as you go forward in your life. This, this is why I said, this is the most important factor in your relationships because the quality of your relationships dictates the quality of your life and the quality of your attachment dictates the quality of your relationships. Your attachment style dictates the quality of life that you're going to experience. Is it going to be a calm, cooperative experience with other people where you are loved and cared for and protected? And I don't mean every safety net is laid out, but that people will act with good faith so you don't have to be terrified. Is that going to be your life or do you need to run the gauntlet 24 hours a day, always afraid, waiting for someone to wrong you, someone to get tired of you, someone to hurt you, someone to drop you, someone to abandon you, someone to just tear you apart. So you have to perform to make them happy and earn approval. You have to stay away and run or you have to act upon them aggressively, preemptively before they can hurt you. This is attachment. This is attachment. And it's why I coach this because people who come into my coaching, they are so deeply unhappy with themselves. They think that they are the problem in so many of their relationships. And if there was only something that they could pull out of themselves this evil, wretched, rotten thing that makes people abandon them. If they could just rip that thing out, they would be fine, but they can't because it's who they are. So they are stuck forever being unlovable. That's anxious attachment style. When people come to me and say, I, I have never been able to open up and connect to people and my girlfriend has left me. My wife is angry at me and she's about to leave me. My kids won't talk to me. I just am so lonely and unhappy and, it sh I, I, and I don't know if it should be this way. I don't know any better is there better than this? Yes, that is called avoidant style. Let me show you how to fix that. Let me talk to you how to fix that. The biggest, the biggest step with fixing your attachment is even believing that it's possible to change because it's a worldview based on how you think you deserve or what other people will treat you as in relationships. That's it. How will people treat you? Will they act with you or act upon you? That is the fundamental question with attachment. Can people love you? because of you or because of them? The answer is yes, yes, you do deserve better. You do deserve better. The answer is yes, people can act with you. Healthy people can act with you with healthy, secure attachment. To get there, you've got to fix your own attachment. How do you do that? Number one, believing that attachment exists. Remember when I said at the very beginning of this video that most therapists don't even know about it. So you may go to five therapists. People who come into my coaching, they say, Adam, I've been to five therapists in the last 10 years. I've spent $20,000 in costs and healthcare costs. I have given everything I have and I am not happier than I was before. What is attachment going to do for me? Well, let me show you why attachment is at the root cause of all of this because you've been treating the symptoms you haven't treated the problem at its heart let's cut through that in four five eight sessions my most common package is four sessions for a relationship but then there's deeper packages and deeper problems so maybe eight sessions is what you need to overhaul your relationship and learn step by step that you can be loved and then how to apply that in your friends and family and relationships that this is how you fix attachment is you go out and experience it you learn about it you study it till you believe it then you learn the steps to go out and have those conversations. You do them and you experience the difference and say, what is this? Because when you fix your attachment, a number of chemicals in your brain start activating. You start getting flooded with vasopressin, the hormone released when you solve problems with other people. You can't get that if you don't believe it's even possible to work with other people. You spend your whole life avoiding working with people. You get oxytocin. Remember I said, does oxytocin bonding feel weird? Does affection feel weird? If you're not used to it, it feels uncomfortable until you experience it regularly. <gasps> 
and then it feels incredible. You get serotonin from good conversations, from warmth, care, reassurance, and all of a sudden your mood starts elevating daily because you're getting the serotonin you're supposed to get. Remember I said, why? Why would a species evolve that requires psychological medication just to survive? Well, maybe the serotonin we're missing is actually missing in our relationships from attachment issues. You think? You get a number of brain chemicals and then you're not so reliant on dopamine. Dopamine is that button we push that when, it, when everything feels terrible, we start binging dopamine. So if you have addictive behaviors, that can feed straight back into attachment issues. You may be struggling with attachment issues and that's why you're addicted to your phone, to sugar, to porn, to video games, to other substances, a number of substances, all kinds of activities and substances. And those addictions can be traced back very often to attachment issues. How'd you like to fix that? <laughs> you can! You can't. The belief is that you can't until someone like me comes along and says, this is attachment. Here's what it means. By watching this video, you've already taken the first step to fixing your attachment. Now you've got a ton of options. You can click this video off and say, yeah, I don't think that's real. And you know what? In three, four years, you're going to have to come back to this video because the rest of your life, again, is going to be dictated. The quality of it is going to be dictated by the quality of your attachment, which dictates the quality of your relationships. So eventually you're going to have to come back. <laughs> Sorry, I'll be here. Hopefully I'll be here on, on multiple platforms, but I'll be here when you need to come back. Hopefully though, you want to fix it right now. And I'm, if so, let me reassure you that you can. You can fix this for life. Now I've got a number of options. You'll check out the descriptions below. I've got all kinds of items in here to help you fix this. Number one, here's my YouTube channel. I've got a ton of other content on here. You are welcome. And please, by all means, watch other videos here on this channel. It is going to cement the belief that you can change this and that you can live a better life with better attachment. That might be what you need right now. Maybe you need a book. I've got my book, Slaying Your Fear, available on Amazon. Again, there should be a link in the description. It's on my website at adamlanesmith.com. Slaying Your Fear condenses my 13 years now of studying attachment and psychology down into 100 pages to explain what it is and some basic steps to fixing it. Maybe you want a deeper dive than that though. I've got my attachment boot camp video course where you can watch seven hours of concentrated material in a university level 4K course over seven hours of thir and 13 videos with lecture notes, with quizzes inside of it. This is material they should be teaching at university levels in grad school. You can access that. Again, click the link down below in the description, the attachment bootcamp course. That will show you how to improve your romantic relationships, your dating, your marriage, how to raise healthier children, how to not pass these attachment issues on to the next generation or the next generation after that. It'll show you how to live with purpose, live with fulfillment in your relationships so you can relax, you can stop being afraid of intimacy, and you can build those relationships you've always wanted. And if you want to fix it fast, you want to talk to somebody. I grew up with attachment issues. I can show you how I fixed them. And then through all the science and all the study and all the trainings I did then for other professionals, as I taught other healthcare professionals how to manage attachment because they had never learned. I can, I can do that. I can come in and coach you personally through fixing this. I have a range of options for you so that you can fix your attachment. You do not have to live with this for the rest of your life. In fact, you can change the secure attachment where you are building that intimacy and you are happy in your life. Really happy. When people say, how do you be happy in life? Cynical people will say, well, you can't. Yes, you can. You need healthier relationships. It's the quality of your relationships that dictate the quality of your life. The quality of your attachment dictates the quality of your relationships. So fix your attachment and boost the quality of your whole life. Thank you for watching. You know what? If you would, smash that follow button, subscribe to me on here, and leave me a comment. Make sure, leave me a comment that lets me know, does affection feel weird for you? Because if it does, we should have a conversation.